very interesting what you're talking about, John, in terms of you know developing the consciousness and actually how long it took central bankers to really come to the party. Goodness, only this week do we finally see something come from the Bank of International Settlements where they're actually going like, whoa, this central bank digital currency thing has a future, it's important, and we should really be doing it, which I think is quite shocking that it's taken them 20-something years. And they went through a long decade of denial where they refused to listen to people like me that such things were going to happen. Central bank digital currency itself, it's easy to say, four letters, CBDC, but everybody thinks that they're all homogeneous, whereas actually there are clearly a lot of different possibilities in the model and design of a CBDC. Absolutely. Actually, you hit it on the head. It's actually key to understanding there are as many different kinds of CBDCs as there are different kinds of cryptocurrencies. It's, it's not monolithic at all, which is why it's so important to understand that because there's probably, as with all things, especially these days, but as with all things that are new, there tends to be a lot of disinformation or misinformation or, or even just uh, flat out ignorance about something. CBDCs, conceptually, it's just a digital bearer instrument issued by a central banking authority. It's fiat money in digital form. Just like cash, it is a liability. At least the technical conception of CBDC is it's supposed to be just like cash. It is a liability of the central bank and it is legal tender. Um, and again, it's a digital bearer instrument. But once you're past that, how you conceive of it the te- and the underlying technology used, uh, how it's architected, what its features are, All of those are, by and large, dependent on the decisions made uh, by the central bank that wants to deploy it and use it. And so what that means is different strokes for different folks, different central banks will have different priorities for why they want to introduce CBDCs. Just by way of shorthand, I actually like to conceive of CBDCs. I think of central banks and the world, how it's divided into sort of G7, G20, and the rest of the world. I find it's just a general observation that the G7s, their view of CBDCs and why they're considering it and uh, their priorities are very different from the G20s and are very, very different from the rest of the world certain things that England may or may not need, very different from what Ghana may or may not need as far as introducing a digital bearer instrument is concerned in those jurisdictions. So as you say, no two CBDCs are really alike. The feature sets are varied. And truth be told, it doesn't even have to be blockchain-based. There are many elements, China's example, but so is the sand dollar. It's interesting that we developed our system almost in parallel with uh, the DCEP in China. And what we later discovered, sort of almost years later, was that many of the features and many of the decisions, as far as the architecture is concerned, were quite similar. And so, for example, our system, without trying to avoid getting into trouble with our IP council without revealing too much. Ours is a hybrid system, for example, sand dollar is. It's not completely blockchain. Blockchain is good for certain things. It's terrible at others. One of the things it's really bad at is actually throughput and transaction speeds. And so we had to hybridize the system in a quite uh, innovative way that leveraged the best aspects of blockchain, some of its immu- features of immutability uh, and security, but had to go with more traditional database systems to help with the throughput and the transaction speeds that are necessary to be able to power a true digital legal tender flowing through an economy. Going back to the original point, all of these design choices, and in particular, things around privacy, for example, that's another big one that people fear is that, oh, CBDC will lead to a police state. And I don't even know where to begin to try to address something like that, because if you're living in a police state now, probably CBDCs will be used to turn your society into more of a police state. If you don't live in a police state now, odds are CBDCs will not be used to turn the place into a police state. It doesn't mean you just like let it go. I'm just saying that it's very dependent on the jurisdiction and the central bank. And it's not a box solution. It's not a piece of software like Microsoft Word where you you just kind of like deploy it in a jurisdiction and voila, it works. That couldn't be farther from the truth. It's the key lesson, I'm just going to leave at this point, it's the key lesson that those of you who are familiar with M-Pesa in Kenya, that mobile money solution that sort of kind of like grassroots, it kind of grew out of uh, a really interesting piece of technology that allowed essentially the tokenization of mobile phone airtime that allowed people to essentially use, uh, convert cash. It took about 13, 14 years for that to grow to scale and uh, to a point where it had 42, 43 million users. 
a lot of NGOs at the time thought, aha, so this is the solution for the unbanked, for the rest of the world, and certainly for the rest of the continent of Africa. And they basically tried to take M-Pesa and tried to essentially just kind of transplant it to various other jurisdictions and failed miserably. And of course it did, because again, money is not a block solution. Each jurisdiction, each country, there's something called sovereignty. And currency is intimately tied with sovereignty or concepts of sovereignty. It's also the reason why we understood once Libra, then later on it was called DM, the Facebook digital currency project, once it was announced, we understood early on that it was probably not going to succeed. And again, it was because it's not like social media where, oh, cute idea, you can just have everybody in your jurisdiction kind of use it, but maybe with some certain regulatory boundaries, but by and large, that's maybe a box solution. Currency is different. Sovereignty matters. Governments matter. 